Hey everybody, and on today's vlog, we are playing Rivet Wars, The Eastern Front by Simon Games. Let's get cracking. Rivet Wars Eastern Front is a tactical miniatures game for two or more players. Each player takes on the role of a commander of a rivet army, representing one of the warring factions. As a commander, you will engage the opposition in battle and take charge of your troops as they are called up and sent to the front to fight. By understanding all of your unit's strengths and weaknesses, and those of your opponent, you will counter your enemy's advances and capture critical objectives to secure your victory. But choosing the wrong troops can lead to disaster, defeat, and possibly even your dismissal as a commander. Hey Sarah, how's it going? I'm well. So what are we playing today? Today we are going to play Rivet Wars Eastern Front from Simon Games. Um, this is an older title from them, um, and we've had it for a while. Um, we've played it a couple of times, but not very much. Um, today we are going to be playing sort of like the second um, game in a sort of campaign. Um, we played the first one yesterday and sort of um, re-familiarized ourselves with some of like just the general mechanics and how the game works and things like that. Um, I smashed face, but yes. I also had really, really, really good die rolls. Like, I was surprised, like, how well, uh, the die rolls. just made tactical decisions better tactical decisions, and maybe I wouldn't have gotten my face kicked in so hard. Maybe not, but I think that you have a decent chance at rebounding this time, because we're gonna play the second game in the campaign, and in this one, I start at an advantage, but each sort of round of the game, you have um, more resources at your disposal. So I think it's probably going to be um, quite challenging for me to not lose. <laughs> um, but if you kick my face again, we're going to say, you are the allied queen. You are the war, war, war princess. So I kind of like that, the war princess. So Rivet Wars is a sort of tactical miniatures game. Um, that is like a beginner or entry level miniatures type game. It's not nearly it's as... It's like a hybrid. Yeah, it's not nearly as complex as like Warhammer 40k or, or any tabletop miniatures game like that. Uh, but it is a little bit more complicated than like your standard um, board game. So I would say um, if you play heavier board games or if you play, if you've ever played any war games, this would be a game that, that you could handle just fine. The rule book seems intimidating, but it's really not that bad once you get into it. There's um, a good deal of flavor text in here, and I'd be happy to read you some of it. Would you like me to do that? Sure. Okay. So the once beautiful world of Ribbit has been wrecked by decades of war. Years of bombing, gassing, and stripping natural resources has taken its toll, turning pastures into muddy, cratered no-man's lands, and blackening the sky with soot and the stench of factory smoke. But the war rages on. With resources focused on feeding each nation's war machine, technology has stagnated to a post-industrial level. Machine guns and primitive armored vehicles have been introduced without replacing the old ways, and it's not uncommon to see a cavalry charge a, a cavalry charge of heavy horses led by an 80-ton six-legged dreadnought. Steam power is still widely accepted while other forces employ electricity, diesel, or horse. The feuding nations of Ribbit have woven and rent asunder their alliances. At the center of this conflict, two dominant and op opposed nations stand out. The Imperial Blighton Empire a monarchy driven by the mad archduke and his uncle, the Kaiser, and the independent allied states, a collection of nations fighting for their freedom. Ruling through fear and brutality, the Blight sees this conflict as a chance to capture more lands and resources, and they will employ any means, even poison gas attacks, to succeed. The Allies, on the other hand, see the Blighton as a direct threat to their sovereignty and struggle to maintain their independence. Meanwhile, still other factions are fighting for any scraps they can find. National borders are in flux, and treaties and fortunes rise and fall daily. Now is the time for brave soldiers to get in the fight. Oh yeah! So that's sort of like an introduction to the, the game itself. Like I said, we played 
um, the sort of beginner or introductory scenario yesterday, and it was um, the first mission, which was called Take Up the Banner, um, and it was sort of a skirmish that broke out after a holiday ceasefire um, sort of dissolved. So we played that yesterday and it's it sort of introduced us to some of the um, basic methodology of the game. Um, today we're going to be playing the second mission, which is called Defense of Hill 356. Um, and in this one, we are going to be attempting to um, capture and keep control of these two sort of objective points. Um, and the there's a short little snippet of flavor text for this one. It says, Last week's border skirmish has erupted into a full-on shooting war. Up and down the front lines, Blight and Allied artillery trade salvos while grunts dig in and stockpile ammunition in preparation for attack and counterattack. After days of skirmishing, the Blight believe they have massed sufficient forces to take Hill 356. Rushing from their bunkers, they hope to overwhelm the small Allied garrison with their rockets and steely determination. Ooh. So that's sort of like the introduction to the um, sort of flavor of the game we're about to play. Um, I am playing as the Allied troops, um, and these are sort of the um, characters or the units that I have at my disposal. And Nick is playing as the opposition. And these are the units that he has at his disposal. Um, each unit will move, attack, um, defend, all in sort of unique ways to that unit. Um, and for this particular mission, we need to hold control over these particular spaces right here um, it, in order to accumulate eight or more points. So the first player to accumulate eight or more points wins, um, and the way that we accumulate those points is at the end of every round, if you have control over one of these spots, if you have any of your characters on one of these spots, then you get one point. First player to eight wins. Um, so what's going to happen is on our turn, we are going to follow a series of steps. Um, the first one is that we are going to get to draw cards. There are actually a few different types of cards in the game, but because this is still sort of one of the introductory missions, the only card type we will have available to us in this game are the action cards. So we get to draw, um, action cards at the start of our turn. Then we get to deploy our units, and the units are deployed based on how many deployment points we have. In this particular scenario, I only have four deployment units, or I'm sorry, four deployment points um, per round, and Nick has six. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna get to deploy up to four units worth, and Nick will deploy up to six. And there is a stat for each one of the characters that tell you how many um, it costs to deploy it. And that's this circular one right here. So if I wanted to, to deploy my uh, Hammer 65 Pounder, it would cost me two of my four deployment unit uh, points. So after we draw cards, we deploy um, any number of units we want to deploy up to our, our um, limit of deployment uh, resources. Um, and then we would attack. And again, every unit has sort of unique um, stats on who it can attack, um, how far away it has to be when it can attack, um, sort of the damage that it can do, all of that kind of stuff. So we would um, attack. Attacks are primarily resolved through die rolls um, and you have different um, different amounts of die at your disposal based on the units you're using. You have um, buffs that you can use to manipulate the die rolls. Sometimes there are cards that let you manipulate the die rolls, but primarily um, when you attack you're using die to resolve the combat. 
after combat, um, every surviving unit that's still on the board can move up to its amount of movement. And again, that's all based on the unit type. Um, and then we have the wrap-up phase. And in the wrap-up phase, we kind of just sort of clean things up for, for after that round. And anybody who is on a um, one of these points right here gets a victory point cool. for this particular mission. Cool. Um, that's a round. After a round is over, we move on to the next round. And we just play round after round until one player hits the campaign objective, which for this one, like I said, is eight victory points. Awesome. So, yeah. So, we're going to go ahead and play and come back to you guys when we get about halfway through, which will be about four uh, victory points. But, yeah, the board's about to look a lot crazier when we get to that halfway point. But, hey, let's get into it. So, River Wars eases your front from Simon Games. We'll see you guys in a second. Bye. Hey, Sarah. How's it going? <laughs> What's up? So... We're halfway through the game. Mm -hmm. Feels like it has taken hours. Um, and I'm losing quite badly. I, we're not, well, I'm not losing quite badly. I'm one point behind Nick, but I have two units on the board, one of which is half dead, and Nick has like 10 billion units on the board, none of which are any amount of dead. Um, and he But the is, scenario did give me an advantage. He is able to deploy um, units with six deployment points every round, where I am only to able to deploy four. Um, and I am not deploying units that are surviving long enough to do anything. So I'm not only deploying fewer and weaker units, they're also being like destroyed before they can accomplish anything at all. Um, which is frustrating. <laughs> I think this is a scenario for, like, if you're pretty good at this game, you should be the uh, the allied or the, the good I don't guys. I know about that, to be honest with you, because this is only the second campaign in the book. Yeah. Uh, we haven't even started to play with all of the components yet. There's still stuff that's not included in this game. So I feel like this is still definitely one of, like, the entry-level games and it didn't mention anything at all about one player being at an advantage over the other player however it does feel like i am at not necessarily like a distinct disadvantage but it feels like it is definitely i don't know i was gonna say more challenging for me but that means that i'm at a distinct disadvantage so i don't know what to tell you um, I am not pleased with the way things that are currently going. Yesterday's game was a lot, you know, quicker and I made some mistakes, so I lost. I feel like, I feel like within just this, the number of units that Nick is able to generate every round, um, I feel like it's, it's kind of overwhelming. His forces are kind of overwhelming my forces. Um, and I do not know, like, I've looked at, like, my units and how they work against Nick un Nick's units and which units are the best to pit against, like, which of his units and that kind of stuff. And I just feel like there is probably, at this point, it doesn't feel like there's any way for me to win. And we're only halfway through the game. Now, I feel like that could change, like, the tides of war could, could shift, right? But... I also feel incredibly discouraged at this point. I've got these two dudes on the board. Nick has all these other dudes on the board. And it just doesn't feel like I'm going to bounce back. I feel like that's a feeling that might be wrong. But I also feel like it's it's like it's over. Might as well just surrender or pack it in kind of thing. And to only be halfway through the game and to feel like it's probably not going to end in my favor to have to slog through the rest of the game um believing that i'm probably not going to win is kind of not what i want to do especially because like i said it's already taken quite a long time to get to this point i think we've been playing for like four hours already i don't know about four hours i just think it feels like a while it has to be at least like an hour and a half 
it's got to be more than that. It's it's almost 2.30 now, and we I feel like we started this at, like, 12 o'clock. Hmm. So, um, yeah. It feels like it's taken a long time to get where we are in the game, and it feels like it will take a long time to finish the game, and it feels like maybe I don't really have a chance at winning anyway. So I kind of just want to quit. I kind of mm. just want to be like, I surrender, you win. Clearly, I'm not going to, to be able to, to win. But I also don't... I think that rage quitting is a terrible, terrible thing to do. Um, not just to your opponent, but also for yourself. Like, you shouldn't just rage quit something. Um, especially a game. But you should also... <laughs> be able to have some fun. Yes. And right now... Well, so what I'm do you think about conceding? Fun. Well... I feel like if I concede, then it is a form of rage quitting. Okay, but maybe I mean, like, I feel like, like it's more of a grace, it's like graceful despair quitting. Um, I feel like I I feel as if I don't have much of a chance to rally at this point, but I think that I might. Right, so I feel like I don't. I think that I might. Um, and, and if there's any chance at rallying, I don't want to give up now and where I could have maybe pulled out a win, but I also don't want to waste like two more hours and be in exactly the same position in two hours and then lose the game. So I, I, I don't know what to do because I feel like I'm probably going to lose, but I think that I might not lose and I don't. I don't want to quit if there's any chance of, of not losing. Um, but I'm also not having like a splendid time. And I am aware of like the pressures of time. I feel like I said, I feel like we've already been playing this for a while. I feel like it would take a, a while longer to finish. And there are other games to play and other things to do. Sure. And so I'm not really sure what what I want to do. I don't want to resign if there's any chance that I could win. Okay. But I also am not having a great time. And I, like I said, I feel like it's going to take a long time to finish this. Okay. So I don't know. I think probably we're going to turn off the camera and Nick and I will discuss whether or not we want to carry on. Um, maybe play a few more rounds and see how that goes. But maybe like... Maybe a few. Yeah, we are halfway through the game points-wise. So maybe if we play like two more rounds, if I haven't been able to generate any more units on the board that are staying on the board, then maybe after a couple more rounds, I'll just say like, yeah, let's concede. Um, since it doesn't seem like I'm yeah, able to shift I, I, I do think all. rage quitting is pretty, um, I don't want to say immature. Well, kind of. It is a little it, bit yeah, immature, I think. I, I don't want to sound so harsh, but I do think it's not fair for the other player. I think if, it's really selfish to yeah. rage quit. But with conceding, yeah, some people might see it as rage quitting, but at the same time, I don't want to be dragging another player through a game. And if it's obvious and both parties are like, we agree that, you know, hey, let's, uh, let's, let's stop this and kind of like play something else. Because, you know, with long games, you know, the, we, we want to spend well, our time playing a bunch of games. On the box, it says 30 to 45 minutes. It has not been 30 Well, I just to wonder if that's stra our strategy. It's if, been at if least has, two hours. I wonder if strategy has uh, an influence on that. But, well, let's, let's, cut, let's cut to uh, playing a few more rounds and getting in uh, and then seeing where we're at, at that point and then maybe... We'll talk about uh, ending the game a little early, and or maybe about, not. We'll about, see. If yeah, I'm able terms to, of uh, surrender. Yeah, if I'm able to like reverse the the tides of war kind of thing, um, if I'm able to just stay on the map for long enough to make some attacks, even that would feel a little bit better than what's happening right now. What's happening now is I'm like deploying units, and before they even get a shot off, they're getting wiped off the board. So. Um, and like I said, I am being pretty strategic about which units to deploy in response to like the units that Nick has deployed, because certain units are better at um, fighting or defending against other units. So like 
uh, this unit right here, he's pretty good at wiping out the small boys. So I am trying to like, okay, if I can get him in a place where I can wipe out a bunch of the small boys, maybe then it won't seem so daunting. But then like, um, I had the two of these biker biker guys that would have been decent at killing him or at least damaging him. Um, and they both got wiped off the board before they could do anything. So even though I'm being strategic about which units I'm deploying and where I'm deploying them and stuff like that, it's, it's not seeming to matter. But let's see what happens in the next couple of rounds. Maybe I can rally. Hmm. Or maybe I'll flip the table. Please don't. No. Flip the table. All right. Well, we'll get back to you guys in a little bit. And so, toodles. Hey, sir. So, uh, how goes it? So it goes. It's over. The Eastern Front has been taken um, by the opposing force. Oh. Um, so we, um, after we recorded uh, the midpoint of the game, we actually took a break. Um, I was getting kind of fatigued. I was getting frustrated. I was getting a little hangry. Uh, so we took a bit of a break. When we came back, we expected that we'd still have like half of the game to, to get through, but it was over in two rounds. Um, you needed eight points to win this, uh, this game, the mm -hmm. campaign game. Yeah, this scenario. Playing. Yeah, this scenario, thank you. You needed eight points to win this scenario. Nick had four when we stepped away at the midpoint. Um, and within two rounds of coming back, he got four more points. And he did that really nicely. Um, in the last round, he took out one of my guys that had a bounty on it. So he got two points just for taking this guy off of the map. And then he also managed to get people into both of the um, bunkers where you can get points from, from this uh, scenario. scenario. Thank you. I don't know why that word keeps falling out of my head. Um, so it was actually over very, very quickly after what we assumed was like the midpoint. Um, and I was, I'm glad because I was starting to get, you know, done with it. I was starting yeah. to be done with it. Um, especially cause it just did not feel like I was able to turn the tide at all. Uh, so for it to be over quickly was merciful. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did you think of the game, Nick? Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, I can't, you know. <laughs> the person that won, yeah, duh, enjoyed it. Uh, it's just the scenario was in my favor, so there was a, a, a you know, a bunch of. I wasn't rolling particularly well this game. Yeah, either. but that also happened in my like first game where it was just, um, uh, you know, it was equal footing, but also I just couldn't get the rolls off, and you were just de demolishing my guys. But um, but yeah, so this is a pretty good one. Uh, we're gonna play later on. Like, not today. Well, today we're moving on to, to different games. And uh, we're going to go ahead and package this sucker up. But, uh, but yeah. Even, even that's going to take a while. Oh, yeah. It's a it's a, it's a Simon game, so with a bunch of miniatures. Uh, anything else you want to add before we cut out, sir? Um, no. I, th I think it was, it was cool. Um, if you like war games or if you like tabletop miniatures games... Uh, if you like heavier two-player games, um, then I would maybe check this one out. Yeah, it's it's, it's a little uh, intimidating, but don't let the don't let that intimidate yeah, you. Yeah, don't let the rule book intimidate you. It feels like this big, huge thing, and there is some meat here. But if you play heavier board games like Grand Austria Hotel or Robinson Crusoe, or Twilight Imperium. If you play games on that level, this is not that difficult. Um, you so just have to take the time to go through everything, because yeah. each game has its own terminology, and once you start playing a bunch of games, I mean, like, it's not... You, you can't get uh, the hang of it right away, but after you've been playing games for years, I would even say, games, when they come out with a terminology for a game, uh, you can kind of put two and two together, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's what they meant. Or uh, that's what, that's what's going on. A huge portion of the rule book is flavor text. Yeah, there a lot of flavor text going on here. There's like flavor text at the beginning of every scenario. There's flavor text at the beginning of the book. There's flavor text dispersed throughout the rule book. On the cards. On the cards. There's tons of flavor text. So some of the rule book is just flavor text. Yeah. Um, so if it seems like a game that you are interested in, but you feel intimidated by it, don't be 
give it a try. It is going to take a little bit to to understand at first, but every every game does, right? Yeah. Um, and don't don't go splurging on this game because there's a bunch of add-ons that you can yeah. get. I would you say know, just try if, it first. Try it if first. If you like it, then you know that there's a lot of, of places yeah. you can go with it. Find a friend that might have it, or um, maybe when conventions get back into full swing. Uh, that you can play it at a convention. But yeah, just, you know, don't just have to dive in because of the FOMO. Resist the FOMO. They're always, always, always attempt to resist the FOMO. Yeah, because games come out every day, feels like. So, you know, play as much as you can and at your pace. So that's going to be the end of uh, this vlog for the River Wars Eastern Front. We all hope you enjoyed it. And heck, if you uh, have a chance to try this out or other Simon games like it, uh, go ahead, do so. I would rather play this Simon sort of minis heavy game than some of their other ones. I know it's not as popular as like Blood Rage or um, what's the one that's like a... Uh, Rising Sun. Rising Sun, yeah. I know it's not as popular as either one of those, but I have played all of them and I would rather play this than some of the other minis games that Simon has. Um, and that's just my personal preference, obviously, but, um, this is more flavorful, I feel like. It's more interesting. It's more the flavor you like, because, you know, there's some yeah. games where I'll like, oh, Samurai's and, you know, Feudal Japan, and you're like, eh, and I'm like, eh, I'm like oh, okay, but I'm like, ninjas. Feudal um, Japan is not, like, attractive to me as a Yeah, an and some people, they, they see the fantasy, all. and they're just like, I don't want fantasy, but then they see, like, Grand Austria Hotel, and... Elevens is and all the games that like have something based in kind of like a real life scenario. I will say that I believe it is intentional um, that this game is sort of modeled after like a World War II sort of war. Um, and if that is gonna, if any of that is gonna upset you at all, I might avoid this one just because. In a lot of the flavor text and in a lot of like the mechanics of the game and like the goals and um, it, like everything in this game is is very, very war oriented. There are not like bright spots of, you know, sunshine and yeah, rainbows. In just... this. It's very much like war oriented and it is less fanciful a war game than some of the others. It's a little bit more realistic. Now, obviously, like, they're driving these, you know, me mechanical tanks and there's, like, dudes who, like, ride in wheels and stuff like that, right? Like, obviously, it is fanciful. But more, this feels more to me like it is closer to an actual war game than some of the more fanciful ones, like Blood Rage or that kind of thing. So... That's, uh, you know, just a warning if you don't want it to be too realistic. All right. Well, this was our vlog, again, of Rivet Wars by Simon Games. We hope you all enjoyed it. And we'll talk to you guys later on our next one. Toodles!